and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're really well. This is episode number six of the Glaciated Landscape and Change series over here on my channel. Today we're going to be looking at glacial movement, how that occurs, what it's all about and that kind of thing. So yeah, there is a whole playlist of this topic so far so I'll link that up here. There's also a completed playlist of the Tectonic Processes and Hazards series which we finished about six weeks ago now. So I'll, li I'll link the playlist up here for you go binge watch them, why not? If this is your first time on my channel, hi, I'm Lara. I am a second year geography and education student at the moment at Liverpool Hope University. And yeah, I just hope this is really useful. I make these because this is exactly what I'd have wanted whilst I was in my A-levels. Someone kind of similar to my own age that just said it as it is, <laughs> not too waffly, hopefully not too boring, because I appreciate that some slightly older people are not the most interesting people to listen to. No shade, but it's true. Anyway, I need to stop rambling, but can you tell I'm excited? I love glaciation. I think that's what I'm gonna write my dissertation on, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Without further ado, let's get into this video. Please like, subscribe down below, because I make these every single week. I also have access to all my revision material down below for this subject, so go find that. It's in the description box down there. You're free to download it, use it, whatever. Um, there are some diagrams that you need to draw, but if you have any questions, just drop me a message and I'll try and help. So yeah, without further ado, let's get straight on into this video. How does ice move? This glacier in Greenland is one of the world's fastest moving glaciers, flowing at about 20 metres a day at its snout. Ice moves in two main ways, internal deformation and basal slip. Basal slip. Basal slip, or sliding, involves a movement that usually occurs in between a series of short jerks. This happens in temperate glaciers, where meltwater helps to lubricate the base of the ice. Such movement can be up to two and three metres a day. When a glacier encounters an obstacle, such as an outcrop of hard rock, the resistance to movement on the upslope side causes an increase in stress and pressure which may result in pressure melting. This allows the glacier to move over the obstacle. The meltwater often refreezes on the downslope side where pressure is reduced. The melting and freezing that depends on pressure is called regulation and the associated movement is called regulation creep. Downhill movement can raise the temperature of the ice due to increased pressure and friction. This positive feedback may lead to further melting of basal ice which allows the glacier to slip more easily over its bed. Internal deformation occurs through intergranular movement, where ice crystals slip and slide over each other, or intergranular movement, when individual ice crystals become deformed or fractured due to the intense stress of the ice, as exerted by the glacier's mass under the influence of gravity. Gradually, the mass of ice deforms and moves downhill in response to gravity. Internal deformation occurs both in polar and temperate glaciers, where ice moves up to one to two centimetres a day. Variations of movement. The rate of ice movement is affected by many factors. Increasing in gradient causes the ice to flow faster, so it becomes stretched and thinner. This is called extensional flow, which creates crevasses over the surface. However, reductions in gradient force the ice to slow and pile up and thicken. This is called compressional flow. Any crevasses previously opened then close. Between the zones of extensional and compressional flow, the ice moves in a rotational manner. Compressional flow increases the mass and erosional power of the glacier, leading to a steeper gradient, fast extensional flow, a thinning of the ice and a reduction in potential erosion, a theoretical negative feedback loop. Factors affecting the rate of movement. We've got altitude. This affects precipitation and temperature. The greater precipitation and lower temperature increase the supply of snow and ice, and so it's mass balance. There is a name for this, and I've completely forgotten what it was. If I, put it, if I can remember, I'll put it on the screen. But generally, the 100 meters higher that you are, the temperature drops by 0.6 degrees. So this is why an increased altitude 
has lower temperatures. Gravity and gradient. Gravity causes ice to move and the steeper the gradient, the faster it flows. Friction is also a factor affecting movement. Friction exerted by the ground has to be overcome for ice to move. Glaciers flow faster towards their centre, away from the effect of friction. The heavier the ice and the greater its mass, the more force is needed to overcome increased friction caused by extra weight. In temperate climates, temperate zones, movement is faster over impermeable surfaces because basal meltwater is retained, aiding slippage. Meltwater lubricates the base of the ice, enabling it to slip downhill. Ice temperature. In Antarctica, ice is so cold that it is frozen to the bedrock, so polar glaciers move significantly slower than temperate glaciers. How do glaciers move? Polar glaciers move almost exclusively by internal deformation, so their movement is slow, as are their rates of erosion and sediment transfer. Greenland's glacier moves unusually quickly. Polar glaciers generally move only a few metres a year. Canada's Saskatchewan again I'll write it here, <laughs> glacier, is more typical of glacial speeds. With temperate glaciers however, internal deformation combined with basal slippage result in greater movement and higher rates of erosion and sediment transfer. Temperate glaciers move up between 2 and 200 metres a year, with for example the murder glass in the French Alps moving about 70 metres a year, like Canada's glacier. This is the end of episode six. I hope you learned something. Again, it was a little bit shorter, but I hope that, I hope you don't mind. It was only a little bit in the book. So yeah, I will see you same time, same place next week. Please like, subscribe. I upload these every Monday at 4.30 p.m. Um, please share it with a friend. So yeah, I will see you soon. Have a lovely week.